Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Dallas. Uh, on this video I'm going to talk about triangle congruency postulate example problems. This says part two because I did a part one video. Uh, let me go back and show you this. Um, we're focusing on this video right here. Uh, this is the harder kinds of problems whenever we're talking about triangle congruency postulates. Uh, I have an easier set of problems uh, under part one and then I have the basic lesson of, of what we're talking about uh, the building blocks of, of these example problems uh, under a, another video called Basics of Triangle Congruency Postulates. If you have not seen uh, this video or this video, uh, make sure you go to my website, dowshouse.com, un look under the second six weeks worth of videos uh, under these titles, or you can just look them up under YouTube. Uh, but anyways, let's move on to the, uh, the harder kinds of problems whenever we're talking about triangle congruency postulates. Uh, question here says, state whether these pairs of triangles are congruent by side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg postulates. If none of these methods work, write none. None uh, indicates that the triangles aren't congruent. Uh, and so looking at 7 here, uh, this problem is looking a little crazy right now. Um, do you see the two triangles in here? Uh, in other words, if, if I were to uh, chop these triangles in half right where this line is, uh, you would have a triangle on top, and then you have a, another triangle on the bottom here. Uh, and so whenever you see, uh, we're talking about triangle congruency postulates, and we see like a parallelogram or a big triangle with a line down the middle, uh, keep in mind here that their triangles are, are possibly going to be squished together. Uh, and so uh, let's use that information to kind of help me solve number seven. Uh, so if I look at number seven here, this side's congruent to this side, which is fantastic. This side is congruent to this side, which is good. Uh, and then also, since this triangle on the top, this triangle on the top is uh, touching and sharing a side of this triangle on the bottom, uh, then I know that this side in the middle is going to be congruent with this side. And, and that's kind of confusing. I have a triangle on, on the top. I have a, a triangle on the bottom. These triangles are sharing a side in the middle. So the side is sharing a side, so that means the sides are going to be congruent to here. And if I look here just on, that's kind of hard to see, if I look just on the triangle on the top, I have a side, side, side. If I look at the triangle on the bottom, I have a side, side, side. And since every side has a corresponding congruent side, I can prove these triangles are congruent by the side, side, side postulate. Uh, kind of tricky, but again, if you have two triangles sharing a side, that side has to be congruent to each other. Uh, and if I look at number eight, that's happening here again. I have a triangle on top, a triangle on the bottom. They're sharing a side here in the middle. And so these sides are sharing each other. So I have a side and another side that are congruent to each other. Uh, we also have this side and this side are congruent, which is good. And then if I look here, this angle is congruent to this one because they're both 90 degrees. Uh, now, let's see here. If I look at the triangle on the top, uh, the triangle on the top here, I have an angle and two sides. Look at the triangle on the bottom. I also have an angle on two sides. And so that's either going to be the side angle side postulate or the hypotenuse leg. Uh, remember, hypotenuse leg spells out ASS, but it's for right triangles or triangles with right angles. And so we're going to keep in mind here, it's going to be one of these two. Uh, now, for it to be a side angle side, we need to have an included angle. Uh, in other words, where the two sides are touching, this, needs, this angle needed to be congruent. And since I don't have an included angle, it's automatically going to not be uh, the side angle side. So I need to look at the hypotenuse leg. Uh, so ASS, hypotenuse leg, we have, have to have a right triangle. I have a right angle here and a right angle here. So this is a right triangle. And then now the hypotenuses need to be congruent. So the hypotenuses are always opposite the 90 degree angles. And since this side and this side, or this hypotenuse and this hypotenuse are congruent, that fulfills a requirement under the hypotenuse. Now the legs, we did have a set of legs that are congruent to each other. Uh, legs are the sides that are not the hypotenuses. And since this side here is congruent to this side here on the bottom triangle, they're sharing a side in the middle. Well, then that is uh, that fulfills this requirement as well for the for the congruent legs. So I can prove these triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg because these are right triangles. Hypotenuses are congruent, and then another set of sides are congruent. Uh, looking at number nine, uh, this angle is congruent to this angle. Uh, this side is congruent to this side. And then keep in mind, I have two triangles that are kind of sharing a, a vertex here. And so I I have an angle and a side, a side and an angle. Uh, now remember, I need to have a combination of three sides or angles to prove that triangles are congruent. 
and so I don't have any tick marks indicating the sides are congruent. Um, keep in mind here, I have a line intersecting another line. We actually have a hidden vertical angle in here, uh, or an angle that's congruent because of, of this vertical angle. And so since I have vertical angles, I know that these angles are congruent. I've got a video under vertical angles under my first six weeks. You're welcome to look at this one. Uh, but if I look at this problem here, I have an angle, angle side, and angle, angle side. I have two angles and a side, so it's going to be one of these two guys right here. For it to be an angle side angle, we need to have an included side. Uh, focusing on these two angles, do I have this side here that's congruent? No. The angle, or sorry, the side that's congruent is outside of the angles. And so that's telling me it's probably going to be an angle, angle side. And so, again, the side's not congruent between the two angles I'm focusing on. And so this is not an angle, angle side. And so it spells out angle, angle side because the side is not included between these two angles. And if I look over here, likewise, it's happening here as well. The side that's congruent uh, to the one over here is not between the two angles I'm focusing on. So this is also an angle, angle side. And since these triangles both have angle, angle side, I can prove these triangles are congruent by the angle, angle side postulate. Moving on to number 10. Oops, sorry about that. Number 10, uh, same kinds of problems. Um, let's see here. Hmm. I have this side's congruent to this side. This angle is congruent to this angle. And then they're sharing a side in the middle, so they are have a set of sides here that are congruent to each other. Uh, and so if I look right now, two sides in an angle, two sides in an angle. It's either going to be the side angle side or the hypotenuse leg. Remember, this is an angle side side uh, with a right angle or right triangle in it. And so this is the only one that has two sides in an angle. Uh, now, for this to be a uh, hypotenuse leg, we need to have a right triangle, which we do. We have a right triangle on the left, right triangle on the right. But one of the we need to have the hypotenuses congruent to each other. Remember, hypotenuses are opposite the 90 degree angles. I don't have any indicators here telling me that these sides are congruent. So I don't know for 100% certainty that the hypotenuses are congruent. So it can't be hypotenuse leg. Uh, let's look here. Do we have an included angle here? Uh, is the angle directly between the two sides I'm focusing on? Absolutely. So side angle side or side angle side here. This is also a side angle side or a side angle side here. So I can actually prove these two triangles are congruent by the side angle side postulate. Moving on to number 11. Um, again, these are touching here in the middle, so we have the triangle on the left. We're trying to see if it's congruent to the triangle on the right. This side's congruent to this side. This angle is congruent to this angle. I don't have any other indicators uh, saying that sides are congruent. Um, and I also, this is not a vertical angle. Uh, this is not a vertical angle, so I do not know that these angles are congruent. I don't know these are congruent. Since I only have a side and an angle on one side and a side and an angle on the other side, I need a combination of three sides and angles. I do not have enough information to prove that these are congruent. And so therefore, the answer is going to be none, meaning I don't think that they're congruent because there's not enough information, or I don't know they're congruent. So I can't assume that they are just because they look they are, like they are. I can't say these are congruent because I don't have enough information. Uh, now, number 12 is actually the hardest problem on here. Uh, keep in mind here again, I have two triangles that are sharing a side in the middle. And so since they're sharing a side in the middle, I have a set of sides that are congruent to each other here. Uh, now these arrows are indicating that this side and this side are parallel because they have the same number of arrows. Two arrows here, two arrows here, indicating that this side's parallel to this side here. Uh, and so we're going to need to use that here in a moment because if we look around, I don't have any tick marks indicating sides are congruent here. Uh, the arrows are saying parallel. The arrows don't say congruent. Uh, I also don't have any indicators that angles are congruent here. Uh, and so there's a problem here. It looks like I can't prove that these are congruent. Uh, but if you remember the parallel angle relationships, since this side is parallel to this side, and I have a transversal going through the middle here. Sorry, my line's a little off. I actually have alternate interior angles. This angle is congruent to this angle right here. And so this angle is congruent to this angle right here. And if I also look at this set of parallel sides, and then the same line as the transversal going right through it, I have another set of alternate interior angles. This angle is congruent to this angle. So it's a little hard to see here, but I actually spell out angle, side, angle in the middle here. I spell out angle, side, angle in the middle here. I can actually prove that these triangles are congruent by the angle, side, angle postulate. 
so if you need to see this again, I've got videos under uh, angle uh, parallel, uh, sorry, angle relationships within parallel lines on my first six weeks worth of videos. Uh, but there's all kinds of stuff happening here, so make sure you you understand this. Anyways, hopefully this helps you understand how to do the harder kinds of problems whenever we're talking about triangle congruency postulate problems. And I hope you have a good day. Bye bye.